everybody. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about unit testing in Stencil JS applications. And so I've actually released a tutorial recently on the blog that goes into quite a bit more depth than I plan to go into in this video. Uh, the tutorial, the written tutorial covers a lot of the basic concepts and walking through creating tests and explaining how to use Jest a little bit. Uh, so in this video, I just want to really quickly cover the basic stuff and just show you what's happening so you can see what's happening on screen and just sort of get an idea of what this all looks like. So as I go into more detail in the written tutorial, uh, we discuss the reasons for unit testing. And basically a unit test is just a bit of code we write that runs an automated test to verify the functionality of our code. So I'm not going to get into the why of that and why we'd want to do that in this video. Otherwise I'll end up talking about it for too long. So again, read that written tutorial if you want to know some more uh, context around that. Uh, but the basic idea is in a, a stencil JS application. If you just were to generate the default Ionic PWA, for example, uh, if you take a look at the application that's generated, you have these default components that you see on the left here. Uh, you won't have app detail because that's one that I've created for this example. Uh, but for app, app home, app profile, app root, you will have these little uh, spec files. So you can see here we have app home.spec.ts, app profile.spec.ts, and you'll find the one in app root as well. And so you don't need to touch these files at all in order to build uh, Ionic or Stencil JS applications. Uh, but these are your unit test files. And if you run your test, these are what will be running. And so you can see that by default, there are already some tests in here that come with the application by default. And this is really cool because uh, having this all set up by default saves a lot of configuration effort and you can just get into building tests much more easily. Uh, this is also the case with Ionic Angular uh, applications now. Uh, you'll find they also have unit testing and end-to-end -end testing set up by default. Uh, but it was the case before that it wasn't and you had to configure it all yourself and that was really uh, difficult. So it's nice just to have these files now that we can start working with. So what we're looking at here is a unit test written with Jest. And so Jest is a JavaScript testing framework. I have their website up on screen right now. Uh, if you are already familiar with Jasmine uh, for writing unit tests, and you might be if you have already been testing in Ionic and Angular, uh, Jest is extremely similar with the API. Uh, you'll find a lot of the same sort of methods like describe, it, expect, uh, to be truthy, to be, uh, all of those sorts of things. Uh, if you aren't familiar with uh, Jest or Jasmine at all, uh, it's probably gonna take a little bit to learn the sort of API that you're going to be using. Uh, so again, I'd recommend checking out that blog post if you don't have the basic idea yet, but you will see a lot of stuff like what we see on screen here. This is the basic structure of a unit test. We de uh, describe a suite of tests. So this is kind of like a collection of related tests uh, using describe. And inside of this right now, we just have the one test. And so then we have it, which describes the behavior that a particular test is going to be testing. So in this case, it's checking if the component successfully builds. And then we have our test inside of this it block here. And then at the end of it, we expect that something happened. And so in this case, we are expecting that if we run new app home, that it's going to create an instance of something that is going to be truthy, which basically just means that it has a true value. It doesn't necessarily have to be literally the true Boolean, uh, but it just has to be some kind of true type of value. So not null, not undefined. So this is a pretty basic uh, test. If you look in the app profile uh, tests here, you'll see some stuff that's a bit more complicated. So again, we have this describe here, uh, which is creating a collection of unit tests. And this time we have all of these. And so this is testing for normalization, which isn't uh, super clear, I guess, but it's uh, testing for the ability for the profile page to uh, normalize the usernames. So what it's doing basically is capitalizing the first letter and running various other checks, uh, lowercasing the rest of the letters, handling single letter names. So this, uh, this suite of tests here is testing all of these things. And so each one of these things is an individual unit test. And so these ones are a little bit more interesting because we're not just creating the component and checking that it uh, loads properly. 
we're actually sort of testing some specific behavior here. And so uh, unit tests will generally follow the format of arrange act assert. And so if we were to break down this unit test here, what we're doing first is we arrange our tests. So we get everything sort of the environment set up that we need to perform the test. So if we just consider this in isolation, we could say that, well, first we are creating the component that we are wanting to test against. So this could be the arrange step. And the next thing we're doing is we are setting the name on that component, the sort of name class member variable to Quincy. And so you could say that this is the act step. We are doing something now. And then the final step is the expect statement, which is the assert uh, portion of arrange act assert. And so we assert or we expect that component.formatted name uh, will now equal Quincy. So we're expecting that it will take this lowercase Quincy and then transform that automatically to uh, and Quincy with an uppercase Q. And so then we can run that test and it can test if the component behaves as we uh, expect it to. So let's actually take a look at running these tests now and see what that looks like. And before I run these, uh, when we run the npm test command, which is what we will use to run these tests, uh, it's also worth noting that it's going to run the end-to-end -end tests as well. Uh, that's not something I'm going to cover in this video. I probably will do another uh, tutorial, a written tutorial or another video uh, covering end-to-end -end tests. And so the key difference between a, a unit test in these spec files and an end-to-end -end test in these E2E files is that a unit test just has one isolated small chunk of code that does one thing. Whereas an end-to-end -end test uh, essentially tests from one end to the other, so from start to the beginning. So you might test something like that a user can uh, uh, log in and share a post from their feed, for example. So the end-to-end -end test might check if the login, the authentication passes successfully, and then the user can uh, click a specific button and then share a post. Uh, so that is sort of long and complicated behavior that involves a lot of uh, interplay between various components and services. Whereas a unit test just focuses on one small isolated thing uh, that doesn't have to rely on sort of any other services or components. Okay, so let's run these tests now. So I've got my terminal up on the screen now and what I'm going to do is uh, run the npm test command and that is going to start executing our stencil tests. So the first time you run this command, it will actually take a little while because it needs to install uh, the various types for Jest and other uh, dependencies, but subsequent tests will run a lot faster. So we can see a bunch of stuff has popped up on the screen now. Basically, it's just going through each of our spec files and running the unit tests in there, uh, as well as the E2E tests as well, but we're just going to ignore those for now. And so you can see I have some for app detail, which I haven't shown on screen yet. And then we have our uh, app home down here, app profile, app, uh, app root test running. And you can see that all of these are passing. So we have seven pass, seven total. Um, so that's the test suites. We have the collections of tests and then individual tests. We have 16 and all 16 are passing. So obviously that's the ideal scenario. You want all your tests to be passing. But the point of tests is for them to fail and for them to catch things that we have broken or that we haven't uh, coded correctly. So let's jump back into those tests and we're going to make a change to uh, make these fail basically. So we'll modify something on this uh, test here. So the expected behavior is that if we pass in Quincy as the name that it's going to capitalize the first Q. And so let's say uh, well, what we were expecting is for this to capitalize the entire name. So this isn't the functionality to this that is currently defined in here. It's not doing that. Uh, so this test is going to uh, fail. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll save that and we'll jump back into the browser or to the terminal rather. And again, we'll run those npm test, uh, the npm test command and we'll see what happens. So you can see we have a uh, failure here now. We see one failed, 15 passed, 16 total. And you can see this is actually quite a descriptive uh, error here. And so we can see that it's failing an app profile for the capitalizes the first letter test under the normalization uh, test suite. And it says that expects received to equal expected. The uh, expected outcome was Quincy with all capitals. 
uh, the received outcome was Quincy with just Q as a capital. And you can see it points to where in the test that is uh, failing. So now we have this kind of good uh, point of reference to see what's going on. Now it might be that we wrote our test incorrectly or it might be that our code isn't satisfying the test. And from here we can now address that and make that fix. Uh, whereas without unit tests, we might have perhaps broken this functionality in some way and it might just go unnoticed because we're relying perhaps on ourselves to test the functionality in a kind of more ad hoc way. So with unit tests, it's a very sort of rigorous and stable, repeatable testing process, which is one of the benefits of building these tests. So I'm just going to change that back now to what it was before. And we're gonna do one more thing uh, before we end this video, uh, because there's a sort of important testing concept for Stencil JS applications specifically uh, that I want to show you. Uh, a lot of these testing concepts are just Jest, Jasmine kind of con uh, concepts that you may already know or that you can learn. Uh, but if we are talking about a stencil application, you might also come across this new spec page option here. And so you can see that we are importing this from uh, stencil core testing. And so again, I'll recommend you read the written tutorial on the blog because uh, I go into a lot more depth about what is happening here. But the basic idea with new spec page is that it will allow you to actually run the component, uh, render it in the browser uh, as the Stencil JS compiler would. And so in some tests, like in uh, here, for example, we could just create an instance of the component and test some functionality. Uh, but some things we want to test might rely on it actually being rendered to the browser as stencil.js is going to do that. So basically what happens here is we might want to say, create a little test page here and we say, uh, await new spec page and we say the components that we want to be available in this test and then the template that we want to use. Now there is a reason in this case why I have, uh, why I'm using divs here as the template. And again, highly recommend you read the blog post to find out why that is. Uh, but typically what would happen in this case is we'd create a template that looks more like this. So we are making the app detail component available and then our template is just using that app detail component. And then we will test some functionality against that. So in this uh, test here, the point of everything that I'm doing is to test that the, it has an item ID prop. And so basically I'm creating that component, the app detail component, setting the item ID uh, prop on it and then I'm checking that that has been set correctly. And then in this second test, I'm doing more or less the same thing. Uh, again, I'm setting that item ID to five, uh, but then I'm expecting that if the item ID is set to five on the detail page, I'll expect that a call to the item service is made to retrieve an item with that same ID. And to do this, we are using uh, a mock function here using jest, uh, jest function. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that into this video. That's another concept to discuss about tests, about mocking functions. Uh, but basically here, it just allows me to sort of create a fake version of my service. And then I can check to see if throughout the course of the test, uh, whether or not that service has been called. And specifically here, we're checking that it has been called with, the, uh, with five specifically. So I have to stop myself uh, here. I don't want this video to be this deep dive into all aspects of unit testing and, and mocking functions and uh, creating all sorts of different tests. I just want to cover the bare bones basics of unit testing and stencil, which I think what we have discussed so far does pretty well. Uh, there is a lot more to learn. So as a first step, I would recommend reading that uh, tutorial that I'm going to link in the description. Uh, and uh, after that, just uh, continuing to search, I'll probably have additional uh, unit testing uh, and end-to-end -end testing tutorials on the blog eventually. Uh, I do already have a lot of testing tutorials for Ionic and Angular applications, and a lot of the concepts are really similar. So uh, you could read those. And of course, there's just tons of testing content out there on the web uh, that you can find as well. So. I hope this served as a pretty good introduction to unit testing and stencil. Uh, if you did like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.